Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here. Let's talk some mountain weather. And boy, is this an exciting forecast. A lot of snow in my uh, forecast. I've got a lot of maps lined up. This should be a really uh, good update here. Overall, my bullet points, all the totals have come up. Um, and I'm really calling this the golden combo with a number of different features in the atmosphere lining up from the atmospheric river contribution to the stacked you know, west-northwest flow pattern all the way down to 10,000 to the jet stream level. We're looking at high ratios with optimal temperatures in some cases of 15 to 20 to 1 snow ratios at some resorts will really help to squeeze out every flake of snow possible with this, uh, this pattern that's shaping up. You can see my timeline for best snow bulk of accumulation there in Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado. Generally 12-1 through about 12-3. In some cases, 12-4, like up in Wyoming. And then a secondary storm system comes in around 12-8 and 12-9 with another shot of snow. But this period, about 12-1 through 12-3, 12-4, is going to be big, as it looks like right now. Let me take you into my um, uh, water vapor satellite imagery here to show you what the setup is. So on this, your oranges and reds are going to be your drier air aloft. The moisture transport is in white and in blue. Um, interesting disturbance over Hawaii, another little low exiting out of Colorado into the uh, the heartland. But this, look at this big low up here, that's going to be hitting the Pacific Northwest. There's another low behind it. So I talked about the power of the jet stream. So we've got the southern branch lined up and it's delivering. Um, but the northern branch, I'm going to use lime because this is a rich tropical connection out here way back into the Pacific. That is the atmospheric river that's shaping up. It's going to bring a moderate to, in, moderate to strong intensity atmospheric river right into the Pacific Northwest in BC. And pieces of that energy will then be transported in to the Intermountain West. So that'll be moved into parts of Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado, adding to the flavor of this storm, adding to the totals. Um, so we'll just, you can kind of see how that happens. It's like a conveyor belt. It just brings in that moisture. And that's what's all going to contribute. Let me show you the forecast radar and satellite. So there's our current state of affairs. As we move into uh, tomorrow, 12 1 at 6 o'clock in the morning, you can see the energy coming in on the southern branch as well as the northern. So both of them combining. Uh, with this strong flow. And now we're in the west-northwest flow pattern in earnest here. This is by Friday afternoon. You can see the pieces of energy coming down from the Pacific Northwest, being directed down towards Idaho, the Tetons, the Wasatch, the, the mountains of Colorado, but in particular the central and northern mountains of Colorado. That's where the biggest totals are going to be over this three-day period. So that's the afternoon. Here's Saturday morning. Same flow continues. And again, from jet stream level all the way down to ridge top level, we're seeing that, ha that happen. Um, here we are in the afternoon on Saturday, 12-2. Still a very solid flow. It's reloading, bringing in the next batch of moisture. And by Saturday, uh, by Sunday morning, you can see it's straight out of the west-northwest, really hitting these ranges with optimal orientation, lifting that air up. And we're just uh, we're squeezing out all this snow with efficiency, high efficiency over the Tetons, the Wasatch, central to northern mountains of Colorado. And, you know, a lot, to, a lot of moisture up in the Pacific Northwest with, you know, this moderate to strong intensity atmospheric river. We're going to see impressive totals up there and a lot of rain at lower elevations. So that is Sunday at 6. Here's Sunday afternoon. The flow continues in all of the same places. And then by Monday morning, it really starts to dry up in Utah and in Colorado. But it continues for a little bit longer up there into 12-4 in the Tetons. And by the time we get into 12-4 in the afternoon, you can see the flow still squeezing out snow over the Tetons. And then another storm lining up for the Pacific Northwest in BC. And that's that secondary storm system that could sweep into the interior around 12-8 and 12.9. All right, let's talk about the jet stream setup here. It's impressive. Well, before we get into that, I want to show you um, the AR component. This is integrated vapor transport for that Washington, Oregon coastline. And you can see it. We've get, we get two spikes here, uh, moderate to strong out of both of them, 12.2, 12.3, and a, and a very solid push, 12.4, 12.5 into the Pacific Northwest. So again, all that moisture contributing to what I'm calling the golden combo with this. All right, so let's go into the jet stream here. This is in the heart of this uh, west-northwest flow pattern on 12.2. You can see the orientation of the jet. Now, alone, this would be impressive, but it's not everything. When you look at the flow all the way down through the atmosphere to about 10K ridge top level in, in a lot of places, 
it's stacked out of the west northwest so this is a very solid setup here all right here we go with a 12.9 this is that secondary storm look how deep this trough is um, so this thing's sinking way to the south and we're getting some jet support into the interior through parts of uh, uh, Utah, Wyoming, and eventually Colorado, 12.8 and 12.9, to generate some of that orographic snowfall. All right, let's talk about the numbers here. So again, there's a number of things contributing. It's orographics, it's the flow, it's the temperature profile, all of this um, helping to squeeze out these big totals. And again, this is really 12.1 through about 12.4. Up in the Tetons, at least two feet. If there's a place that I'm thinking I'm underdoing it, it might be in the Tetons. We could be closer to 30 inches. Um, those numbers have been very consistent. In the Wasatch, anywhere from three feet up there around Alta and Snowbird to probably two feet, maybe a little bit more in Big Cottonwood Canyon. And then uh, Park City Deer Valley numbers should end up around 18, 19, 20, 21 inches, somewhere right in there. In Colorado, again, it's the central to northern mountains, in particular, the western slope. So around Crested Butte, Aspen, Snowmass, the Highlands, up to Steamboat, um, into Vail, those areas uh, should see one to two feet of accumulation out of this thing. Um, and some impressive totals in the, in the San Juans. But really, we're looking north of there. That's where I think the best emphasis and everything comes together. Um, some of that will spill over into Summit County and across the Front Range. All the numbers will be down. The Front Range high peaks probably 10 to 12 inches will do it for most of those places. Um, Cameron Pass, that area typically benefits nicely out of this west-northwest flow, so probably one to two feet there. Up into Idaho, central Idaho gets the most, although I've upped the numbers for Schweitzer now to a foot. Um, so, you know, looking at probably one to two feet there from Schweitzer down to Brundage. Into the Pacific Northwest, again, at the higher elevations, it's probably two to three feet. I think that's what we're looking at with this. And some nice snow through the interior parts of BC as well, but that's the big period across the West. Let's break it down just a little bit. I've got some specialty maps here. So this, this really hasn't changed. I updated this this afternoon. This is accumulation through time, a snow plume map for the uh, Jackson Hole area. And, you know, over that period from 12, 1, 2 into 3 and 4, uh, I think we end up with anywhere from 27 to 30, 27 to 30 inches up there. And then again, 12, 7, 8, 9, probably some additional accumulation with that second storm system. Here's another one. So this is the front range of Colorado. Denver's down below. You're looking to the west, west, northwest. So you're looking up through the foothills and into the high peaks across that front range though that, that continental divide of the front range and then it, again the biggest numbers are to the west of that so once you drop back into uh, say Vail you're looking at you know one to two feet even Breck might get some decent spill over this from this uh, it depends how strong that flow is um, coming down over the 10 mile range um, Steamboat does well Buff Pass Cameron Pass one to two feet I don't think that's going to be in question I think we'll end up with those very close to those numbers and and because this this is a west northwest flow it down slopes into Denver so that's going to dry the air out down here I don't think we'll see much except if you're really close to the foothills or up in the foothills all right here is um, this is the, the second period this is 12 5 through 12 9 that's that secondary storm that could bring potentially another 5 to 10 inches of snow to the Wasatch another 2 to 6 for the uh, the Tetons and quite a variety into Colorado as that slides through so this would all be bonus snow you know on the tail end of this this golden combo that we're going to see one more stop here this is into the northeast i don't want to leave the northeast out snow totals through 12 9. i'll break it down for you so there's a light to moderate snow that comes through late 12 1 into 12 2. the bigger accumulation that really lights up this map comes in on 12 3 into 12 4. that's looking more like a a more substantial area of low pressure that comes across so um, and i added snow ridge to the map just below Hunter Mountain there, so uh, I had a request for that, so that's now on the map. But guys, this is a this is the pattern, man. The west northwest flow usually brings the snow to a lot of places. You know, the good ore graphics, the temp profile, the the stacked winds. I think we've got it here. So I'll keep things updated. Always appreciate you tuning in here and take care.